What's up guys, my name is Phil. Welcome back to Miranda Detailing and welcome back to another weekend wash. In today's video, we're gonna be cleaning up the trailer. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be cleaning up the trailer, but also showing you got guys, but also showing you guys a couple of extra things, some additions to the trailer, as well as a big question that I get a lot, how do you prime your gas pressure washer to draw from a static source like our water tank. We're going to be washing the exterior of the trailer. I haven't done it in months and I just need to do it. So it needs to be cleaned. It's been sitting under the trees. It's been rained on. It's not horribly dirty because, well, we haven't really taken it out that many times within the past four months. But I wanna clean the, whim the whims, but I wanna clean the tires and wheels and at least clean the exterior and top it with something but I also wanna show you some of the upgrades to the back. Now you may have already seen this. If you follow us on Instagram, check that out as well. And subscribe to the channel, click that bell so you don't miss stuff because we're gonna show you all sorts of updates. Sometimes we put some posts on there, some live streaming, all sorts of stuff. But I wanna show you guys what we're doing to the trailer. So I pulled the trailer here closer to the garage because I want to uh, be close to the water here. I'm actually gonna be pulling out the garden hose and connecting it to my hot water because it's still a little chilly today. The beginning of April and here in Virginia, for some reason, the weather just keeps going back and forth. So it's a little chilly and even this evening, it's going to be, nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. And even this evening, it's going to be 36. Ugh, yeah, I don't like that, but that will break soon. Next week, we're gonna be in the 70s. Now, as we look around the trailer, you see some of these lines here from junk accumulating, running down, and I want to clean all of that up. Clean up these wheels and tires as well. Now I upgraded my wheels. The trailer wheels that I kept getting were garbage. They would not even last a year and they would just wear out. So they were not uh, the proper tires I needed to handle the weight that I have in here. So I got these really nice steel radials and that is what I needed for this trailer. So yeah, stuff like that, it'll clean up because I do have some protection on here. I, I forget what I put on here. Now I also may be switching out my logo. Uh, we redid our logo and uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So there's a local company here called Quick Signs. They are amazing. And they also just hooked up my friend Tony from Raldo's Details. They just did his van. Check out how nice that looks. So they do a great job. If you are in the Richmond area and you're looking for a great uh, vinyl graphics, stickers, all sorts of lettering, they are the ones to go to and their prices are just right. Not too expensive, not too cheap to make you worry. They are awesome, highly recommended. Now let's take a look at what we have going on back here. Oh, hello, yeah, that's new. Now, why did I choose to go with a new generator? The generator I had before, the Predator, it's a 4,500 watt, it's great. And uh, it actually you know, is more powerful than this, but this has some features that I really wanted. And this also will be revamped and we'll have something else here. So stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be doing something special with this. More on that later, but this is the beginning. Now, as we look at the slide out, you'll see that I upgraded the diamond plate and you'll see Tony's sticker on here. Why? Because he custom builds these slide outs. If you're a regular on the channel, you know that Tony can build stuff like this. He can fabricate stuff, he can weld, he puts these together from scratch. And he made this, I think this one is steel, I think, maybe it's aluminum, but he can, he can make them in either steel or aluminum and uh, then he has the nice aluminum diamond plate and these are just amazing. He can custom build them to pretty much any size from little ones all the way up to entire rigs that can pull all the way out. Amazing. So if you have a trailer, a truck, a van, whatever it is, and you have your generator in there, but you're worried about the exhaust, the exhaust ports that way. So that's what I do. I pull this whole thing out. Let's see if I can do it one handed. There we go. It slides right out, locks into place. He also makes these. So on your generator, you're going to have a giant outlet here. A lot of people just don't know what that is. This one here is a 120 volt, 30 amp. It's a 30 amp plug, which means you can put this on an extension, split it, 
into two receptacles like he did up there. So now I can power all sorts of stuff. And if you have some machines that pull all the amperage like the air compressor, the vacuum, the blower, I have the steamer that I attach up there to that extension cord. I will run those off of the 30 amper. Um, and then other ones I will run off the other 20 amp here. Now a lot of stuff going on here. This thing of course is an inverter. It's a digital inverter generator. Now I'm gonna try my best to explain what that means, but basically it has an alternator in it. It has a battery in it. It charges its own little battery, which means it will have electric start. If I press that button, it'll start right up. It also has eco mode here, so it will rev down. The beauty of an inverter generator is that it can tell the draw that it is uh, pulling or the pull, whatever it is, um, from any of the machines. And if no machines are running, this thing will rev down. So it will actually conserve fuel. It will save fuel. So it basically has a computer in it and all the digital stuff in there will be able to figure out what is pulling the most and it will rev up according to what you are using as equipment. So I'm hoping that this thing will save me money in the long run because I'm going to be switching out to a different type of pressure washer that I'll be using this for. And this has a remote. Yeah, why? What, what's the benefit of having a remote? Why go so fancy? Do you need this? No, you don't need it. But when you are a business and you've been doing this for years, efficiency is so important and it's very important to me. Being organized is very important to me. So it's not about having the best of the best because this is a Westinghouse. I wouldn't consider this the best of the best. The Hondas at this range are even more expensive, a thousand dollars more than this beast. This thing is a grand on Amazon. If you are interested in this, this is great for mobile guys. I'll have the link down below. The beauty of this is if you are somewhere where you don't want a lot of noise, this thing is quiet for one thing, but you can also shut this off when you're in the car or a customer comes up to talk to you, quickly shut it off, turn it back on again. If you're running an electric pressure washer and you don't need the pressure washer at the moment and you have this running, you can either shut it off or put it on eco mode. When you put it on eco mode, it will rev down even lower. It's amazing. Let's give it a little test run and show you what I mean. Now, Tony also bolted this um, to the diamond plate frame. So it's not going anywhere at all. So now you turn it on here. You can either press that button there or you can press the on button here. Now, it realizes that nothing is working. Nothing is turned on here. Let's turn it on to eco mode and it revs down even more. Very, very quiet. Now, when you turn something on in eco mode, say for instance, the air compressor, that has a lot of draw. Kicks right on. In fact, the air compressor is louder than the generator. I can't even hear the generator over the air compressor. That's impressive. Now, vacuum is on. Lower. All of that stuff is more noisy than the generator itself. And look how quiet it is. It revs right back down and that's gonna save fuel. Instead of just having it rev, it's constantly running at the same rate. While with the inverter here, it's basically like a smart generator. It will rev down and only rev up when needed. So, quiet, compact, amazing. So I know, is it too much? Well, that depends on you. I want it. It's something that's going to speed up my work and it's quiet. It's just, it's simply an upgrade. If you can't afford that right now, you don't have to get that. It's not a requirement. The Predator generator that I had before, it's now a backup. That thing was great. And it's actually more wattage than this if you need it, but this will run everything that I need. So let's put her away. 
and this will go back and, and click right into place, nice and compact. So guys, here's what we're going to do. I have my SwiftJet foam gun hooked up to my garden hose. The garden hose is hooked up to my utility sink with warm water. So I turn the heat, uh, the hot water on full blast and then cranked about a quarter turn on the cold water. So it's a nice mixture. It's not gonna be super hot. I have one of those expandable hoses. Seems to take the heat just fine. Again, it's not full hot water anyway. I'm using the Vosh Premium Car Shampoo. I got this in the glove box, detail box subscriptions, which I love, looking forward to the one uh, for this month. And this soap is nice, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's, you know, in my top five soaps. When it comes to shampoos, really all I look for is lubricity, and I do want a high foaming shampoo. My opinions on the, the foam, um, basically my idea is I want that cushion. I want there to be a lot of foam. I like to use the foam cannon, not to do a pre-wash, but to apply the soap onto the vehicle and to wash it. That way I'm not dumping my wash pads into a separate wash bucket. I just have a rinse bucket. Makes it so much easier. That's just my way of doing it. It works great. Doesn't cause damage or anything like that. Um, it's our preferred way. Our pre-wash is the most important thing. If you want to check out uh, a video on how we do a proper pre-wash, our APC rinsing method, it's not our method. Uh, it's one that I kind of mixed and matched from a couple of different detailers uh, who are well known. Uh, so check out that card if you are interested in that. But I have a little bit of the shampoo left, so we're gonna use it here on the trailer. So this gun that comes with the Swift Jet, uh, pretty nice. You can actually unscrew this quick connect and use it like a regular hose. The only thing is when you have the quick connect on here, you don't get that nice fan um, that I really like for washing with a hose like this. See? And when you put this on, it just restricts it. Not a big deal, just something of note. So let's rinse it down and uh, we'll wash all the paint here. And some of you guys are not gonna like what I'm going to do. You've seen it before, but there's always new people watching these videos and I know they're gonna comment on it. You'll see in a bit. So I'm gonna put the nozzle back on here, the quick connect nozzle. And I'm just gonna plaster this with soap because I just want to apply, whoops, the soap onto it. This also does come off. So you can actually spread the soap horizontally or vertically. That's just an option here. I like to do that to basically quickly apply the shampoo onto the surface. Oh, a brush. Yeah, it's a trailer. It's not a sports car. You're inducing swirls on your trailer. Yeah, probably. I don't care. It's a trailer. <laughs> now, I also get a lot of questions about our pressure washer setup. And I want to go over how to prime your pressure washer, a gas pressure washer especially. I don't use an electric one in my trailer, so I can't show you that process, but I can show you the process priming a gas pressure washer to pull from a static source. That's important. I get a lot of questions about it. I'm going to include that in the video, so stay tuned. Missed a spot. I don't know what I put on here, but it's beating up really, really well. I think the last time I washed this, I think I applied Technician's Choice, maybe? I actually forgot. <laughs> so it beads up really well and it's cleaning up easily. Nice.
And if you're wondering, I have, I believe it is the Red Thunder, either from Melco or Renegade. I forget which one. Either one works really well. Oh yeah, pulling off lots of junk on these tires and wheels. Beautiful. Okay, everything is... Oh, you know what? I forgot to do back here. She's nice and clean. And as you can see, it's actually beating up really well. Not bad. Now, if you remember a while ago, I polished all the aluminum bright work. Yeah, it looks awesome. And actually still beating water. The diamond plate here is beating up and it looks awesome, beautiful. That was with the Renegade polishes, the metal polishes and chrome polishes, awesome stuff. So guys, here's a tip, and I don't know if this is going to work across the board or not, because there's a lot of variables, there's a lot of, it depends on this. But for mobile guys, if you are, say, in a parking lot in a work area, and you end up with a lot of water. Now, you may have a decontamination mat, you may be able to vacuum it up, or maybe if you're just working in super hot weather, it's gonna dry up quickly anyway. If not, if you end up with a lot of water around the vehicle, and you're going to be either working on the interior next, or you just don't wanna leave that much water there, because who knows, working in office parks and things like that, security can come around, environmental people can come around, they can give you a lot of trouble. But I found that having a push broom like this, you can get one that has the bristles, uh, you can get one with the squeegee, but if you get the bristles, it works really well on blacktop. You see, or you may see uh, us do this in the videos, um, where we're scooping all the water down, we're brushing all the water down. We do have some ideas, we're gonna have to put some drainage in here because it puddles up right in front of the driveway and it's actually kind of rotting away the pavement that's here. That was like that when we got here, so it's just an issue. Since we wash cars here so often, you know, it might be advantageous to put some drainage. So we're working on that, we're gonna be uh, planning on putting some drainage here so that Basically the water can go right into it and we have a French drain over there that drains right out into the lawn. It would be perfect. So we're gonna work on that. However, in the meantime, this works really well. Let's get a cheap push broom and just push the water. You can even spread the water out over the blacktop and it will evaporate, it'll dry. But if you wanna push away from the vehicle, you can do that. It kind of cleans up your area and it makes the water evaporate that much quicker and you don't have puddles. So just a, a quick tip, take it for what it's worth. So I'm gonna choose Gleam. This is from Enzo. Now this detailer, can't see me, there we go. Now this detailer boasts two months protection, but it's not really made for protection. It's just a true detailer. It's just to add gloss slickness and to uh, use as a drying aid as well. That, that's another feature um, of this product. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not worried about adding more protection. It's fine, it's just the trailer. I just want to dry it up and make it look really nice. So you can spray this onto the towel or onto the paint directly, doesn't matter. Nice. So that does help with drying. Now everything is uh, Nice and dry on this side, nice and glossy. Awesome, it's great stuff. Okay guys, let's show you how to draw from a water tank like this with your pressure washer. Now, this is going to be for a gas pressure washer, not an electric. Um, if you have an electric, it kind of depends on what type it is. Some of them can draw, they can prime themselves. 
uh, but it all depends on your setup here. So I'm gonna give you some tips and I'm going to drain this whole system and show you how we prime it. So guys, when you are connecting all of this stuff together, I'm gonna to put links down below. This is a 50 foot pressure washer hose. These things are kind of hard to come by and I don't know why. Well, actually it could be because a lot of guys are starting their mobile detailing business and they want a 50 foot like this. You can get a hundred foot, but this is so small and compact, it's awesome. You can usually find them on Amazon. Sometimes they sell out, but you know, save it, mark it in your list and keep an eye on it. Um, I think there were a few last time I checked. As of today, April 3rd, 2021, um, there were a few on there. So I'll put them in the description down below. Same goes with these pressure washer hoses. I do not buy expensive pressure washer hoses. I just generally don't. Sometimes I do if I want to splurge, but you know, for a mobile guy who's on a budget, you don't need to get the best of the best right away. You can upgrade later if you so choose. But this hose here is a 50 foot pressure washer hose rated up to 4,000 PSI, which is awesome. Max temp of 176 also. Um, I mean, everything is written on here, which is really, really cool. And this, this uh, pressure washer hose, I think was around 50 bucks, 60 bucks. That's reasonable. This, I used to get these hose reels at around 50, 60 bucks. If you can find them locally, great. If not, I think Amazon, like I said, should have them, but the price sometimes goes up to like a hundred bucks or more. But then again, nice compact form. And sometimes they'll come with this three foot line here, which is very, very important. Now, one tip I wanna show you guys, I'm actually draining this hose right now, is get some either white lithium grease or WD-40 with silicone, water-resistant silicone. This is going to help. I actually spray this on all of these joints every once in a while. Even if I don't need to take them apart, I'll spray them because it will help with any type of buildup. Hard water buildup, rust, anything like that. And there are gaskets or O-rings in each of these things that sometimes they'll blow, they get dry over time, they'll blow, and then everything leaks, which is crazy. Um, but you can buy packs of O-rings and install them yourself. You can get a little hook, pull them out, put a new one in, and you're golden. I'm draining this right now. I'm gonna drain this system. I have that shut off. Okay, good. And let's drain the pump. So my water intake I have shut off at the source at the tank here. All right, I'm gonna drain all of that. Now here's how we prime the system. If you are at home and you have your garden hose, that's gonna be the easiest way and the, and the quickest way. I can prime this system just using the water tank alone because once you turn the valve here, let me show you. So with the hose here, I have that shut off valve. That one over there goes to nothing yet. I just put it in there in case I wanna add something later. But I shut that off and the water hose right here, all drained. Now the moment I turn that on, you'll see the water flowing. And you'll also notice I have it raised up about six inches or so. And this is down here. So eh, it's not, not as high as I want. I wish this was a little bit higher, but it works. So if I turn this on, That'll start flowing. Turn it off, there we go. Now here's one way, I'm gonna show you two methods. You can first attach it here and don't tighten it all the way. Let's tighten it till it's almost there. Leave it loose like that. Now, I'm going to connect everything like this, make sure everything is connected on your hoses here. Yep, okay. So the whole system is connected. Now, what I'm gonna do is turn this on and it'll leak out like that and then tighten it just a little bit, not all the way. It might drip a little bit, that's okay. Now, everything's drained out here. I'm gonna connect everything. All right. Now, we're gonna start it. Now remember, the water's flowing in through here. There you go.
All right, there we go. You saw it took a little bit. You know, there were some air bubbles to work out, but it went through all the lines and it was fine. So that's one way of priming it. Now this pump is very powerful and I do think that it can draw from the tank like this. Not necessarily designed to do that, but it can. So that's how you prime the system using the tank. And you can see I only have it half full, but the water was flowing out of here at a good rate. Doesn't have a ton of pressure behind it, but enough to actually go into the pump and start to prime everything. And you do have a couple of bubbles in there. And I know it's not ideal, but you can do it that way. Once you have your system primed, for mobile guys, for me, I never drained it out. Not in the summer, not even in the winter. I keep it heated in here and I don't even worry about it. Everything stays primed. So let's show you the second way and really this is the best way to do it. So I'm gonna disconnect everything here. It's dry up because I'm making a big mess in my trailer. This hose here is part of the unloader system. This is an unloader. What this does is when you are not pressing the trigger here and releasing the pressure from here, that pressure is building up in your pump. So in order to unload it, this is a separate piece that you buy and you connect it to your uh, outlet hose here. So this goes to the pressure washer hose and the reel. This will engage and push water, recirculate it back into the tank. So it's a constant flow. It's a recirculating system and it keeps your pump cool. Now, when it's not running, it still builds up. The water will expand when it gets hot and it will still, you know, kind of seep out. So this little guy here does release pressure. It's another thermal valve and it will release uh, the water pressure that, that's built up in here when it does heat up, when it's not even on. So that's why I keep everything primed but this will still seep out water because you know the water gets hot and it needs to go somewhere. So I have it drained into here and it just flows down there. But I shut it off there because it'll just continue to pull water if I do that. I mean, it'll, it'll just trickle. And I just shut it off there and this will seep out whatever's in this little system here. It's not gonna empty everything out, but it'll empty out whatever's in this little system. So this unloader here, this actually does adjust pressure. This adjusts pressure for here, but I never touch it. I just leave it alone. I've tested the pressure and it's about 2100 PSI coming out of the gun. And that's because this engine, I forget the CCs on it. Let me see if I can find it on here. It's almost worn out. And I know it doesn't really equate to horsepower, but from the research I've done, it's just under five horsepower or so. And I know. CCs and horsepower don't jive, they don't equate, but don't worry about that. I know that it's, it's just under five horsepower-ish. Um, so this is going to produce 2,100 PSI, but this pump is rated up to 4,000 PSI. It's a big pump on a smaller motor. So let's show you the second but better way to prime. You're gonna take your garden hose, and I have it here. Let's make sure that it's off so this doesn't splash up in my face. Let's turn it on. There we go. So this is good to do um, to prime your pump. You first get it, you first set it up, or you empty it out for whatever reason. Because you don't want to depressurize everything when you come home, you have a job the next day, you don't want to start all over again. But what you can do is at least take out your hose, your pressure washer hose, just start it up, press the trigger, make sure everything is primed. Just do a test run, a quick test run, before you leave the house. That way you know that everything is primed, ready to go for your job. There's nothing worse than getting to your job and realizing it's not primed and you need to go through the process again. Kind of annoying. But with the garden hose, very easy. Connect it, turn it on. Now, it's gonna come out of here at the pressure that the garden hose is set. It didn't do that before with the tank because it doesn't have a lot of pressure behind it. But once you do this, everything is primed. If I were to start the engine right now, the pressure washer, completely fine. It works perfectly. Doing this, you know that your whole system is primed and ready to go. So here's what you do. Release it, just shut off the water from the garden hose, 
quickly unscrew that hose. You're gonna lose a little bit of water, but it's not a big deal. And connect this one. And again, turn your water on from your tank. It'll gush out like that, tighten it up. And there you go. I know, it's a little messy, but once you do this once, you're primed, it's ready to go. You don't need to do it again unless you drain the system. That's why I don't drain the system. I just leave it alone and I don't have any problems. I don't have any issues. Okay guys, so that's gonna do it for the weekend wash. I hope those tips were helpful, especially for the priming of your pressure washer pump. So again, just to give you a couple of, of tips with that, reminders, have your water tank raised above the pressure washer inlet, where the water goes into the pressure washer pump. Six inches is ideal to have that height. You can do it with about uh, four inches of height difference. Make sure your tank is filled all the way up at least uh, because that will help with the downward pressure, the, the gravity uh, feeding part. That's really what it is. It's a gravity fed system. If you follow those tips, making sure that you work out some of those uh, air bubbles that are in the hose, then you can prime it from the tank alone. Now this is for a gas pressure washer, electric pressure washer might be a little different and sometimes they just don't have enough pull. They may not prime properly at all. And the only way to do it properly would be the second option, just prime it with the garden hose already. Prime it with the garden hose, make sure there's water through all of the lines and the pump with electric pressure washer. This goes for both gas and electric. And then quickly switch out your garden hose from your tank hose. And you may have a few little air bubbles in there but everything should be primed enough so that you can get right to work. Also remember with your water tank, don't completely seal it up. If you can drill a small hole, half inch hole on the top of your water tank, that's gonna allow for draw, for airflow. Because if you lock everything up in there, it's gonna create a suction and the water is not gonna flow out of the hose to your pressure washer. It's gonna stop it up. So you need to have that airflow so it doesn't create suction. So you can either loosen the cap on the top of your water tank if it's that style, or just drill a small half inch hole on the top for that airflow. And remember, once you have everything primed, just leave it that way, don't worry about it. Some of those pumps are gonna have a thermal re uh, release valve anyway, like this one does. The electric ones don't because they're a different system. So if you need to drain everything, if that's what you want to do, you can, but you'll just be starting all over again but it's not a big deal. If you're at home, you have your garden hose, just prime it at the beginning of the day and you'll be fine. So guys, stay tuned to the channel for more updates on the back end of the trailer. We already have the generator, very, very happy with it. It's still kind of in its break-in session. I'm gonna run it for a couple of hours under some load and then we're going to change the oil in it. We might do that you know, two times or three times um, and then we should be good. The cool thing is I can keep track of the hours on there, how many hours uh, it's been running. You can keep track of the voltage and all that stuff, but the prime reason I got it is for the noise level, the remote control level, and the economy. Being able to rev down like that when it's not being uh, in full use when you're using all of your equipment. So for a mobile guy, that generator is just, it's awesome. I'm really, really enjoying it. And their customer service seems to be really, really good. I contacted them because there was a little bit of damage one of the side panels came in crushed from Amazon. Yeah, that just happens. I called the company directly. We have an order, uh, a work order already in place to get that replaced. They're just gonna send the part right to us, which is really awesome. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned to the channel. Click that bell so you don't miss stuff. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great week.